Okay, in this module, we will talk about an example for the velocity potential concept. Okay, the first thing that I want to say that I will analyze a very realistic flow in a parallel plate. Okay, and in a parallel plate, this will be my velocity distribution. Okay, and I will draw you the velocity distribution inside of a parallel plane plate. Okay, these are both are fixed. Okay, there's a flow from left to right. And in real life, for a viscous flow, the velocity distribution is going to look like this. It's going to be symmetric. Okay, and I'm going to obtain the Vmax when I have my y, which is defined from the center, to be zero. That y is equal to zero, I'm going to get my, myself a Vmax. So you can observe from this equation as well. If you plug y is equal to zero, you get Vmax as u, right? And obviously, the velocity going up in this particular case will be zero, okay? So, for this flow, find the velocity potential, okay? So, that's the question I'm trying to solve. All right, so I want to tell you right off the bat that this is a tricky question, okay? The answer is it doesn't exist. Okay, the answer doesn't exist. So I'm going to take two paths in here. One path will be the person who is aware of every single step and does it right. And I'll also show you the step that students are going to take if they're not very careful. And I will also illustrate how you can understand that you made a mistake somewhere down the line. Okay, so let me start with the first step, which is to check whether this is a rotational flow or not. Okay, as we discussed, the velocity potential only exists when the flow is irrotational. So to check that, there are three conditions that we discuss. Okay, del V, del W, del X must be equal to del U, del Z. Also del W, del Y needs to be equal to del V, del Z, and del U, del Y must be equal to del V, del X. Okay, so this is the condition for the velocity potential to exist, okay? So as we discussed in the previous module, this will automatically be satisfied. So this is fine. Okay. And this also will be satisfied for 2D flow where U and V are present and W is equal to zero. So the only thing that I have to do is test this. Okay. So let's go ahead and insert del of del Y of U and U is V max, right? And in parentheses, one minus Y over H square, right? Is equal to del del x of v, which is 0, okay? So the left-hand side, or rather the right-hand side, becomes 0, obviously. Let's look at the right-hand side. Well, I'm taking the partial of this bracket with respect to the y, okay? So I'm going to obtain 2y two, two times v max divided by h squared. There's a minus in front of it, right? This is what I'm going to obtain for the left-hand side. And obviously this is not equal to zero, right? Because Vmax is a number, y is a variable. It can be zero at y is equal to zero, but it's not zero everywhere, right? H is some particular distance. So I can go up in here and indicate that, let's say, this is gonna be H, and this is gonna be H as well, right? So it's just a particular number. So this is not satisfied. So by looking at it, you should be able to identify and say that the velocity potential does not exist, okay? So what I observe from homeworks, assignments, different deliverables, exams, projects, etc., is sometimes we are not as careful and we kind of skip the step that I started from here. So I kind of go ahead and say that hey, I just didn't do it, right? So I'll show you what will happen if you go ahead and kind of neglect this entire approach and start with finding the velocity potential by using the formulas that's given to me, okay? So if I look at my notes, you will see that the, the velocity potential and the velocity in this x is related by this equation and the velocity in the y and the velocity potential is related by this equation. And in this particular case, I'm given a u as v max 1 minus y over h square. 
and V is equal to zero. Okay, so I have option over here how I should start this approach just like I did in the stream function concepts, right? I can start with this and go ahead. I usually start by U. So Vmax one minus Y over H square it will be equal to del velocity potential del x. And from here, in order to find the velocity potential then, I'm gonna move this term to the, le to the left hand side of the equation and take the integral of both sides. And I'm gonna obtain Vmax is just a constant. The scale will give me x minus y over h squared x, right? Plus f of y, right? Because I account for x over here, I'm now account for y here, okay? This is steady, so I don't have a t. If I had a t, I should include this here as well, okay? So this will, my, this will be my velocity potential. Um, but now I will go ahead and use this, this equation that I didn't quite use yet, right? This equation. And I also will go ahead and insert this to here that I do know, right? And see what happens, okay? We'll go ahead and do that. So my V, which is zero, is del, del Y of the velocity potential, which is V max X minus Y over H square X plus F of Y, right? Seems like a long equation. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate this. What I will obtain is left hand side zero, so when I take the uh, basically this equation with respect to y, v max times x, y, that, that vanishes. But the second term that I have over here will stay, right? So that will be v max times 2y x divided by h squared, right? v max times 2y x divided by x squared. And the third term that I'm going to obtain will be f prime of y, where f prime of y is equal to d f y dy, right? Okay, let's go ahead and do it. So from here, if you see, I'm going to get myself f prime of y. Actually, I have a negative here, right? Right. So f prime of y will be equal to v max 2yx 8 square, right? Okay, now, I will not go ahead and uh, proceed, and I will show you something that uh, you can understand that you made a mistake in this process, okay? So, can you, as a student, see this? Okay, so you should be able to see this. But I'll tell you the answer, okay? So, the answer is here. I'm saying that this derivative of a function, it doesn't matter derivative integral or rather a function, because derivative of a function is another function, right? I can call g of x, right? g of y, g of c, whatever. So, okay. Do you see the issue here that I have an x as well? Right? So I have a y on the right-hand side. That's fine. But I do have an x as well, okay? There's two options over here. One, we may have made a mistake somewhere in our calculation. Two, maybe this equation doesn't exist to begin with, right? So you can see that if the right-hand side of this equation was a valid, then I should have y comma x, right, or x comma y. Then this is fine. And in this particular case, I showed you before that actually, in fact, this doesn't exist. I'm solving for something that doesn't exist, okay?